obviously reducing everything down to racism is going to uh, filter out a lot of the complexity of the uh, the situation that you might be in. But it's also very true also that racism is a very real thing that affects the lives, particularly of minorities in, in the United States. And so I think it's actually rather easy um, to maybe if you want to call it a trap or not, but a, a way of thinking, which says like, this is, this is, this is about race. This is about the fact that white people have always been entitled and have always felt that they deserve everything. And that, you know, the anger that a person might feel over that may, um, make it very difficult to think about it in that way that you're discussing, which I think is absolutely correct. But I find that oftentimes our deep emotional, our, 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 our deep-seated frustrations that, are, that occur throughout life, the trauma and pain that you mentioned at the beginning of this, this conversation, um, you know, when people fixate on a phrase or a word that triggers them or makes them feel a certain way, um, they're getting hung up on the trauma and the pain that they may have experienced their entire life for things that they had no control over, right? Like you don't necessarily mm-hmm. choose to be born a black woman in the United States, but you but you are. I mean, if you are that person, then you have to you have to own that experience and you have to be in, in that that body and experience what it's like to be that that particular human being at this particular time in this particular place. And in trying to navigate a way through that to where you understand you know, what you're discussing. And I think oftentimes what the, the danger, of course, is that, you know, you read or you're a, you're a white male from the United States and people are going to be like, well, he can easily make those critiques and he can easily talk about all of that because of his, you know, race, of, of the color of his skin and his gender. And it's just, it seems like a really difficult knot to unravel mm-hmm. and un, un, uh, unwind, I guess. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If, if- Mm-hmm. Um, and first of all, yes, there is definitely deep pain, deep suffering, deep trauma. Um, you know, I like the experience of being outside of the the political norm, the accepted norm, whatever that is. If that's you know being queer, being trans, being disabled, being black, being anything, you know, being anything except for what is what is considered normal in the united states um is going to be traumatizing the question is what do we do with the trauma you know um when when i was younger um and yeah, when i was younger i found i found gay identity to be liberating um it, it was amazing it was great it was um it, it put me in a position where I felt like I was part of a community of people who have uh, shared suffering, so shared interests, shared desires. Um, and, and you know, at first it was great. Um, and, and it also helped me, well, I thought it helped me see how I was being depressed or oppressed, excuse me. You know, I would have a straight straight coworker or a straight boss or a straight friend who would say something that was a microaggression or, or, you know, was oppressive. And I'd call them out on that and I'd um, continuously call them out on that to try to make them, uh, you know, stop being oppressive towards me. Um, it, that didn't work at all. Um, it made me feel good at first until I realized that I was being defined by my trauma. Um, I was being defined by this sense that um, everybody was out to oppress me, um, even other gays, you know. Um, it, it was a helpful transitioner, transition period for me um, to, to claim that identity. Um, but afterwards, I, I, I decided, hey, actually, this, this doesn't do me any good. Um, it, it uh, you know... It, it, we're all responsible for um, not the pain that has happened to us, but what we do with that pain, what we do with that trauma. If if we <clears throat> if we blame the groups that we see as responsible, uh, whether that is is fully one hundred percent true that they're responsible, or you know a, a perception that they're responsible, and if we live our lives completely um, in opposition to that group. Uh, then, then our identity is just constructed from trauma. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, uh, it's a victim identity. 
Um, and, and it can be useful, um, you know, for a while, but eventually when you no longer want to, to be victimized, um, or, or take on the identity of victim, and instead you want to take on an identity of liberation, you know, you, you have to move past that. Now that seems like I'm letting a lot of people off of the hook. Um, I, part of the issue unfortunately with identity politics is the idea of collective responsibility mm -hmm. um there there is is no um no metric of 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 uh, uh you know how how much is a and, and actually um and i think she'll be okay with me using this example i have a friend who is uh She's a single mother raising a son. Her son is, uh, is young. He's a teenager. Um, his son has not raped a woman. His son is not, or her son is not, uh, you know, abused any women. He is not responsible at all. Like, he has not actually done any of these things that uh, right now um, feminists and others are fighting against. Mm -hmm. um, but if you read, or, and, and he has been reading, um, the internet, you know, and, and reads these, uh, these essays and posts and, and Tumblr, whatever, about how his maleness is the problem, that he is a, an oppressor. He is part of the problem and he needs to stop oppressing women. Um, the, the dude is young. He, he hasn't, he hasn't gotten to the point where he's even, you know, even would have oppressed people. Um, now, Take someone like him versus Donald Trump, who <laughs> has a very, very long, very epic um, history of of oppressing women, um, and is still actively oppressing women. Now, when we say all white men are are the problem, or all men are the are the problem, then you know we we make a, a huge error, um, you know. Instead of instead of saying that individuals are the problem, like, you know this 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 is something that Dr. Bones likes to say very often. Mm -hmm. um, the people who are fucking up the planet have names and addresses. You know the, these are individuals. We 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 know them. We you know they're in the news. Like um, you know the the systems that they are a part of. You know be that patriarchy or whiteness or, or maleness or whatever. Those definitely exist, but they don't exist without powerful individuals who keep replicating them. And when we attempt to go, when, when, when we paint the responsibility as collective, uh, so that a 12-year-old boy and a 16-year-old teenager and an 80-year-old man and a 65-year-old CEO all have the exact same amount of responsibility and the same culp culpability and same fault in oppressing women. Um, it, it actually makes sure that it, it, it makes certain that we cannot actually get at the problem, you know, and those mm -hmm. problems, as I said, are individuals. Yeah. Um, so, so when, when I say it, when it sounds like I'm letting a lot of people off the hook by, uh, you know, making that statement about trauma, um, it's specifically because, you know, I am not I am not personally oppressing anybody. I would love to help people get the people who are oppressing them. You know, I'd like mm -hmm. to enable them, empower them, fight alongside them to fight the people who are oppressing them. But I can't take responsibility for what Trump has done to people. You know, yeah. um, and 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 when we decide that. Everybody who shares the same physical characteristics, like every everybody who has a penis, who who is born cis male, everybody who has pale skin, um, is the problem. Is 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 um, um, you know, are the agents of oppression? Then, you know, we're we're not going to change anything. But it'll definitely make us feel better. Yeah. And and I think that's that's another thing that's. Uh, being addressed more and more about uh, the way that social justice politics work, especially on the internet, uh, it makes you feel really good to call out somebody. It makes you feel really good to, you know, shame somebody, especially when there are other people watching and praising you for finally speaking the truth, as it were. Mm -hmm. 
you know, until of course that gets turned on you later. 